Hi everybody, I'm so excited to share with you my design team projects for Renee Bouquets. So I have a shabby grungy mini album and a Tessie Messy. So a Tessie Messy is basically just a cone shaped object to hold typically flowers, potpourri, treats and stuff like that. Um, a lot of times you'll see them as a, a Christmas item for Christmas ornaments. So. Um, but I've made a Halloween version of that, and I also made this for a Shabby Ween YouTube pop that I am participating in, and so if you're subscribed to my channel, you will have already seen it, and I will put a link to that channel below because I do have a how-to on how to make the cone, and I've also talked about the colors and the stuff that I've used to distress and ink up my trims and my ribbons and a few other um, tips and stuff as well so more information on this so I will give you a close-up look um, but for more information on the Tessie Messy you'll need to go to that other channel or um, excuse me to that other video so I've used just paper for the, the cone and it's really easy to do and I've included all this gorgeous lace from Renee Bouquets. I've got this lace up on the top here. These little mini roses from Renee Bouquets. I love these chocolate covered caramel roses. I mean, they're just perfectly distressed and the perfect colors for this project. I've got a butterfly here from Renee Bouquets and I do uh, talk about that in my other video. I did grunge it up and I'll tell you how I did that in the other video. And this drop leaf lace here I've got it tucked in and I do want to show you the laces that I use from Renee Bouquets because I mean it's such a complete difference so this is the lace that I used on my projects so you can see here how much I've distressed them and how different they look so even the black here um, I didn't want it to be completely stark black and so I've distressed it to give it more of that grungy gray look and this, I'll talk about this lace in just a minute, but this here is my new favorite lace from Renee Bouquets. Oh my gosh. I love, love this stuff. I I don't use it, well, I mean, you can, I probably might one day use it like a whole strand like this, but what I'm using it for is I'm cutting apart these leaflets or these drop leaves, and I'm just separating them and using them as tuck-ins for my shabby projects. And so you can see here how I've just tucked them in and I've tucked them in here and here on the album cover. And so this is just from one strand. I've just cut it apart and tucked a little bit here and a little bit there. So yeah, so this, love this kind of lace. This is so fun to do. So really loving that. And this is new this year at Renee Bouquet's. So let's see, on my Tussie Messy, I, yeah, I think I've pretty much show, went all the way around now. I've got a little bit, one of those mini black roses on top of the, the spider here. So anyway, I'm just really happy with the way it came out. I am excited um, to be able to create a really grungy, gothic, Halloween project using Renee Bouquet's supplies. I bet you didn't know you could do that, huh? So anyway, so I'm going to set this aside and, we'll, and I'll show you the album. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So first of all, I have to say, check out this absolutely adorable spider web. I mean, is that not the prettiest spider web you've ever seen? So these are new this year at 
Renee bouquets and they are just absolutely gorgeous and I'm so excited about these. These are going to be a must have in my Halloween stash. So there's three different sizes. I've used two in the album. This is the smaller, this is a medium size I believe and I've used the large size. Then also from, oh and I got it mentioned that this little spider comes with the spider web. There's a couple spiders with the sets. So there's more than one spider in each package. And I mean, just too cute. I'm absolutely loving that. And of course, I've got the same roses and trims that's on the Tussie Mussy. I've even got one of these grunged up butterflies. And I do talk about um, how I did that. Uh, in my other video and um, but this is one of the champagne butterflies from the tiny treasure size very uh, very pretty butterflies but I had to grunge it up for Halloween <laughs> so and this absolutely gorgeous gothic gate that is the centerpiece of the album is the small gothic gate from Renee Bouquet's and there is a larger size, but this one is perfect for this little album. And I took some of that black sand mixed media paste and and put some grit all over the gate. And then I um, inked it and, and just used some of my stains and stuff to ink it up. And so I'm just really happy with the way it came out. I love that it looks a little worn and rusted and... Um, I don't know if it necessarily looks rusted, but anyway, it just has that old grungy look to it. So the album is seven and a half inches wide by four and a half inches tall. I've used a lightweight or thin chipboard for the pages. And then the papers I used are from a digital shop on Etsy. And I will put a link to those collections that I've used below. I just poked a couple holes in the out in the pages and just strung some shabby trim through there. And you cannot tie it too tight if you do that because you have to have room for the pages to turn. So I originally was going to do all kinds of things with this album and, and just do a bunch of flip flouts and everything like that since it's a small album. But once I had Put this element on I decided to keep it more journal like and just to keep it very simple and ready to go in case I decide to do something completely different with this I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do with this with this album um I might make it more of a journal rather than a than a photo album but we'll just have to wait and see um but I like having the versatility of doing that and that's why I left some of the pages blank um I, I mean what I was going to do before would have been just great, I'm sure, but it was kind of a happy accident. I had had set this frame down onto the paper, and it had kind of landed where the skull was. And I thought, oh my gosh, that that is a perfect frame for this. Uh, I was originally going to put this on a different page. And anyway, so then anyway, it evolved into this. And once I had this on, this little this little element here, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit how I did it. I I traced out the image from a scrap piece of paper. I cut it, put it on a thin chipboard. It was still too thin, so then I um, traced it out on another piece of chipboard and cut it out and glued it down, and it was the perfect level for the frame. But once I had that on there, I just thought that that was so pretty, and I just didn't want to cover it up. I love this paper, and I just couldn't cover it up. So I'm like, okay, this is going to end up being more of a, a journal, um, a simple um, album so that I can junk it up later if I want. So um, I've got this, another piece of lace from Renewable Case, And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did here. So I fussy cut the lace. So what, I, what that means if you're a novice at crafting or scrapbooking, fussy cutting also a lot of times refers to um, intricately cutting the details out of a piece of paper. Um, I did that with the lace. So where these lace bouquets here, I cut around that leaf and that petal. And then I went over to the other side and cut around that leaf and that petal so that I would just have a little rose or a lace piece that looks like that. 
So um, instead of, you know, as opposed to just cutting it straight down the side. So that's what I did here, and I did it on the next page as well. Um, not 100% happy with this. This this trim is a little bit too close to the same color as this. Um, but I didn't have any of any other lace trims or ribbon trims um, left over from inking, and so I'd have to start all over. <laughs> so I haven't done that yet. Um, thinking about putting a spider there, but I only had one fuzzy spider left, and I might need it for my tussy mussy when I go to fill it up. So I don't know what I'm gonna do there. I want to find more fuzzy spiders. I'm really sad that I don't have any more. This, I love this page here. So I took another one of those pieces of lace that I fussy cut and and I made this into a pocket. So if you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure you have like a scrap piece of paper there or a scrap piece of acetate or something to place in there. And so you know where to glue and where to stop gluing. And then also to I had to have a piece of something there. Um, when I glued the ribbon on so it wouldn't go through the lace and onto the bottom of the page. I rounded the corners so that it won't poke into the lace when you pull it in and out. And I just love how that came out. I think it's so pretty. I intentionally wanted some of the colors to be a little odd and maybe not quite match, um, clash a little bit. So you're going to have, you know, the reds um, and the pinks that Pull out the papers here and then I had to add these these orange colored roses um, I just like the the look of clashing those colors for a grungy Halloween project and of course another one of these gorgeous gorgeous spider web and little spiders so pretty and look how it kind of matches this gothic look of the paper here just so pretty this is probably the most traditional page I made in this album. I just really, um, I made a pocket, but I wanted to add the lace here. Um, so these tags are going to be the closest thing to a photo mat in this album. <laughs> and, um, but I love, I love the feel of these. They came out really kind of stiff and sturdy. I've got two pieces of paper with cardstock in between. So it's giving it a nice feel, but yet it's not too thick to tuck into this pocket. Love, love, love this paper. <laughs> the eyes glowing, so cool. And and then I kind of made the cheesecloth look like a swirl, you know, how you see little people do the little dots after the butterfly to show where the butterfly is flying. <laughs> kind of, I don't know if you can get that. Maybe you're just looking at that and saying, it looks like there's just a blob of cheesecloth. I don't know. Anyways. Oh, gal. So, um, uh, love these spider web clocks. Um, this is the second year in the row. I put this in one of my Halloween projects. Um, it's so funny to me how the same item can be used in such a different type of object. So, my last project was a very vintage, classic black and orange Halloween folio, and I made a a clock or a 2D clock that that goes onto the cover. And so you'll have to check it out. Just scroll through the videos below and you'll see that video and some tutorials on how to make the clock. Um, but anyway, I just love these clocks and um, I just scrunched this one up and gave it more of a shabby feel. And so that is my little tiny Halloween shabby album. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget I will have a link to all of the products below and make sure you check out the website because there are a lot of more new Halloween items that I have not shown you. So um, be on the lookout for those. So you guys, thanks for watching and have a happy Halloween. Bye.